Hello everyone and welcome to another game development episode where we're recreating the Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. In the last episode, we had Link moving left, right, up, and down, got the animations down, and started on the attack sprite, but only for the left. Today we're going to do the up, down, left, and right attack sprites, as well as the sword, and it's going to look something like this. Alright, before we get too far into this, there's a couple of cleanup items we're going to do. One thing you'll notice is that Link seems to be moving kind of slow, and I realized that I missed something in an earlier step. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the room, and we're going to change the room speed to 60, and that's going to double his speed, basically. Um, and I meant to do that earlier, so I apologize for that. Part 2 that we're going to do is we're going to do some cleanup within the object player. So we're going to open object player, go into the step event, and we're going to take, let me open this up a little bit. You'll notice that we have a bunch of repeating code here. Um, this input check, we do it in the idle up, down, left, and right. We're going to copy that into a script and use the script instead. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the left. If you've been following along the whole time in the other videos, um, the left actually has the attack button, the others don't. And once we do this, let's go ahead and copy this. We're going to right click on script and create a script. And it's going to be check inputs all. Just paste that right in there. Um, it's keeping the indents, so shift tab back. And all we're going to do is copy the check inputs all and delete the current code that's there. Put some parentheses. And boom, we're done. This is going to be much more effective. So when we add stuff to the the input checks later, it's all done in here. So let's do this for all of our states. So that's up and idle. We do not need to do that for the attack because we do not want to check for inputs during attack. That's a state that does not allow for inputs. So this should all work just fine. And in fact, if we go ahead and play that real quick, we're going to notice that everything's working fine. It's going to attack from all directions. But you notice when we do up and down, he attacks only left. That's because we haven't added those sprites, and we're going to do that now. So we're going to go into sprites, player, and we're going to add two sprites. Create sprite, sprite, um, player, attack, up. Load the sprite, and there's the attack up. We'll center the origin. Okay. Add another sprite. Sprite. Player. Attack. Down. Load sprite. Set the origin to center. And we're done with the sprites. Now, let's close all this to keep it clean. We're going to open up our player object again. And we're going to add something to our create code. We're going to go to the create code. And we're going to add two variables. One is sprite walk equals to sprite um, player up and sprite attack is equal to sprite player attack up. Oop, it's not full sprite. There we go. Okay, so let me explain what we're going to do here. We're going to store which sprites that we want in each of the um, different states. So this is going to, I'm going to copy and paste this. We're going to close this and go back to the step event. And in each of the states like up, we're going to add right here between image speed and the sprite index that we're setting. We're going to say player walk is equal to up, player attack is equal to player attack up in the up state. And then we're going to change this. We're going to copy the sprite walk and set the sprite index to walk. We're going to need this later when we get to the idle state is that we're going to want to get back to whatever sprite that we were originally doing after the attack. So all this should make sense here in just a little bit. So let's do this. Let's copy these three from sprite player walk or sprite walk all the way to setting the index. We're going to come down here and replace sprite index with all that code. And instead of up, we're going to say down since we're in the down state. That stays the same. Let's create a little space here. Uh, same thing here for the side. And so we'll change up 
the side. So this is the left state here that we're dealing with inside. Copy that because this is just going to be repeated for the right. Okay. So now we've set the images that we need, or we set the variables for the images that we need in each of these states. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up here uh, to the attack. And we're now going to say instead of just defaulting to the side sprite, we're going to go to sprite attack, right? We're going to do that. And then when we get back to idle, we're going to set the sprite index to equal to sprite walk. What this does is it's going to set the right attack sprite and it's going to set the right um, walk sprite when we get to the idle state. Let's take a look. Okay, pressing space, attack, space attack, space attack, space attack. Now if I'm in the idle and I press the attack button, I'm going to go back to whatever idle state I was in. Boom, that works. So we're good to go there. All right, now that we've got the player states all set up here, we're going to add the sword object. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new group here for the sprites that's going to be for our items. In the future, this will hold everything from bombs to potions and whatnot. So we're going to create a sprite called um, sword. We're going to load our sword sprite, which is here. And we're going to center that origin. And then we're going to create an object sword. Let's set it to that sprite. Okay. And right now we're not going to do anything else except for just create this object. And now we're going to go back to the player state, uh, the player object. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another variable. Um, this time we're going to add a variable called facing so that we can hold which direction the player is facing. And it's going to be in four directions. Zero is up. Let's add, it. add this as a comment. Zero is up, one is right, two is down, and three is left. So just going clockwise. And we'll use this here in a little bit, well right now, to set in the step event every time we get to a different direction. So in up, we're going to say facing equals zero. Down, um, since this isn't going clockwise, down is actually um, two. So facing equals two, left is facing equals three, and right is facing equals one. Equals one, okay. So the next thing that we need to do is actually do something with this. Um, this is gonna be important in a little bit when we actually set the direction of the sword. So we're gonna go to our attack sword we're going to add some code here. So we're going to say if, hey, let me show you something real quick in the game. So if I, let's see, do I have this? I have it paused right now. So in slow motion, I'm going to show you, I'm going to go frame by frame with this. And you'll notice I'm going to hit frame, frame. There's a little bit of a delay before the sword actually comes out. And then it stays there for a little bit. I'm hitting frames and then it retracts and then we're done we're going to try to reproduce that. So originally when we started the attack here, we set the timer to 15. So what we're going to do is since we're counting down from 15, we're going to say if timer equals equals eight, we're going to run some code. This is when the sword is actually going to generate. So, um, to start, we'll say, um, let's do a switch facing. So which, which direction are we facing? And real quick, we can write some quick code, case zero. Um, and we're gonna say inst instance create X. Um, and then, so for facing up, we're going to want the Y to be a little bit higher. So we want the sword to show up in front of link. So we're gonna say minus 12 here and we're going to say object sword okay and then we're going to break this 
We're going to do this for each direction. So I'm going to copy and paste this just to speed up everything. So that's going to be one, two, three. So in case one, when we're facing right, instead of negative 12, we'll keep the Y the same direction, but we're going to add 12. So it shows up to the right. In case of down, instead of minus 12, we're going to say plus 12. So it shows up below him. And then in the case of three, when he's facing left, we're going to say minus 12 on the x-axis and y. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this code real quick. And we should see the sword show up in each of the right directions. So facing up, it shows up. Facing right, shows up. Facing down, shows up. And facing left, it shows up. But they don't, they stay there. So we're going to have to add some code to the sword object. So let's go do that. And this is fairly easy. Um, oh, I forgot something. Uh, and we're going to go back to that real quick. Let's do this real quick. Let's twist the sword in the right direction. I should have done this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a width statement to each of these. Um, again, I'm going to copy and paste this real quick. Let's, let's go ahead and add the code here. It's uh, width, and we're going to set the image angle, angle equal to zero. So I'm going to copy paste this, um, cause I think it's going to be faster to rewrite the, the X and Y variables than it is to write, rewrite the width statement. So the width statement, if you're not familiar with it says with this object, it's going to create the object. And then I can set the variables within that object. So this one's negative 12, this one's plus 12, this one's plus 12 on the Y, and this one's minus 12 on the, the X. Okay, so the sword sprite is facing up, so, um, and let me pop up an image real quick. This chart here shows the direction that the sprites are facing in degrees in a circle. So we're going to use this to turn our image. Our sprite happens to be facing up. So when we turn it uh, 90, if we set it to 90, it would actually start facing left. If we turned it to 180, it would actually face down and 270, it would face to the right. So the whole reason is because it's assuming zero is to the right. So keep that in mind when we're doing this. So for up, it stays zero because that's the, we want to keep the, the image facing up. Um, so the right is actually going to be 270 because we're going to turn it all the way around. So it's facing right. Um, we're just going to flip this 180 for facing down and this one's going to be 90 degrees. So this is going to change the direction. Let's go ahead and show that real quick. So up still works up, right faces right now, down and left. So now let's edit the code in the actual sword to do what we need it to do. So we're in the sword, we're gonna do a create event and all we're gonna do in the create event is a timer. So we're gonna go to control, drag the code over. And we're gonna say timer is equal to zero. We're gonna start from zero this time instead of from a higher number. We're going to add the step event and we're going to drag the code again. Pretty simple code here. Um, we're going to say if the timer is less than or equal to nine, we're going to do some work else. We're going to destroy the instance. And what this does is basically we're saying as long as it, the timer is less than nine, we're going to do stuff with it. Otherwise we're going to get rid of it. So the sword disappears. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say if the timer is greater than seven, we're going to set the direction equal to image angle. So we set the image angle in the player sprite or in the player step. Um, so it's facing the right direction. We're going to add 270. And then we're going to do mod 360. 
So what this is going to do, um, I know it looks like a bunch of code and it doesn't make any sense, but we're going to, whatever f direction that the, the sword is, is facing, we're going to add, add 270 degrees and that's going to make it go over 360 in some cases. So we divide by 360 and whatever the remainder is, is what direction we point it in. In summary, this is the code to flip, to, to set the motion direction of this sword in the opposite direction that it's facing. So it's going to go backwards. And the way you move the object at that point is once you set the direction, you just set the speed to something. In this case, we're going to say equals to four. That's going to make it move backwards. The last piece of code we need to do here is the timer needs to increment by one every time we're in this step event. So what this is going to do is make the sword pop out and retract. Um, we only want it to start retracting after seven seconds because remember the sword stays out there for a little bit and then retracts. So let's test it. Okay, so up, right, down, left. It's working perfectly. Let's see if it works while we're walking. Yep. Link stops, it retracts. And that's it. That's exactly what we need to do. So awesome. Hopefully you guys were following along. Um, all the code is there in, in the video. So you should be able to get to this same exact state. If you have any trouble, add some comments in the, the bottom of this video. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. So uh, next episode, we're going to do collisions with walls. We'll create some walls. So thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next episode.